Hello and welcome everyone to this eCognition Deconstructed video. Today we're gonna discuss the multi-resolution segmentation. I would say that's the most widely used segmentation because it creates really nice image objects reflecting the spectral signature of your input image and also delineates your features nicely. So what it does, it creates image objects. It's a bottom-up approach that means that it starts with small image objects, in this case, pixel sized image objects and grows into neighboring image objects. You as a user can define the shape and size of the image objects that result from the multi-resolution segmentation. I'm gonna discuss that in the next few slides, so pay attention. First, I would like to show you a small animation of how this procedure works. So first of all, the seed looks for its best fitting neighbor for potential merger. That's the rectangle in the middle. So it looks around and checks its neighbors and looks for the best fitting one. So the top one, this green, dark green one, would in this case be the best fitting one for the central image object. If best fitting is not mutual, the best candidate object becomes the new seed object and finds its best fitting partner. So in this case, it's not mutual. So for the new seed, the best fitting neighbor is the one in the top right corner. And now it checks again if it's mutual or not. And that's going to be continued until best fitting is mutual and then the image objects are merged. So in this case, you see these two green ones here the connection is mutual, so these are merged. So in each loop, every image object in the image object level will be handled once and that's gonna continue until no further merger is possible. You as a user can define certain parameters. You see in these uh, green circles, the scale parameter on the left hand side. So you can alter this one, you can alter the shape compactness and also the layer weights. This is your chance as a user to influence the output of the multi-resolution segmentation. Here we have a few definitions that might be helpful for this video. So first of all, the color heterogeneity. This is the sum of weighted standard deviations for all layers. Shape heterogeneity, on the other hand, is the deviation from a compact or a smooth shape. The compactness is the border length divided by the area, whereas smoothness is the border length divided by border length of a bounding box. So keep just keep that in mind or you also can go back in the video to check these definitions. We're going to continue on the main settings that influence the size and shape of objects. So we have scale parameter, shape and compactness. First of all, the scale parameter. This is a homogeneity criterion and is a combination of spectral and shape criteria. To make it easy, large scale parameter equals bigger image objects, small scale parameter smaller. So the question always pops up, what scale parameter is best? And there is no definite answer to that question. It depends on a lot of different things. For example, the sensor type that they're using, the purpose of your segmentation additional input information, your objects of interest, and also your expert opinion. So it's very difficult to come up with one number that reflects the best scale parameter for your segmentation. Nevertheless, you're gonna find a tool called ESP tool to estimate the scale parameter in the eCognition community. Usually it's trial and error, so play with the data and test different options, and it's your experience. So use it and you're gonna know which settings are best suited for your purpose. Let's have a look at an example. This would be the input image and always remember, right? Initial image objects are your building blocks. So you, we have a lot of tools to alter the outline of your image objects. In this case, I'm increasing the scale parameter. You see, get bigger image objects. I'm increasing my scale parameter and this leads to larger image objects. And it depends on your purpose. These image objects, for example, would not be good if you are looking for single cars, but it's a good segmentation if you're looking for the roof of the building. Even larger scale parameter results in very large image objects that are more or less meaningless in this case if you're looking for building or cars because they're covering all of the features in one image object. Let's continue with the shape setting. 
So you can alter this parameter as well. The high shape value leads to low color influence, which is the spectral reflectance. So if you increase the shape, the influence of the color homogeneity criterion is reduced. On the right hand side, you see if you increase it, the shape influence from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 the color influence is reduced because these two make up the value of one. The minimum value is 0 0.1, maximum 0 0.9 for the shape. Changing the shape value is gonna change the result of your multi-resolution segmentation. The same holds true for the compactness. However, the compactness is influencing the shape. And that makes it pretty difficult for me to explain. Nevertheless, I tried to put it into this graph on the right hand side. So you see that the compactness and smoothness make up the value of one. So compactness plus smoothness is one. What you can change is the compactness, not the smoothness. The smoothness is automatically adjusted. So if you increase compactness, smoothness is lowered. And this relationship is influencing the shape. So if you have a high shape value and a high compactness value, the shape will have a high influence onto the segmentation results. So you're gonna get really compact image objects. If you increase the shape, but have a low compactness value, you're gonna get more smooth image objects. But keep in mind that then the spectral signature, if you have a high shape value, the spectral signature is considered less in the segmentation procedure. I guess your brain's already reached your absorption capacity. Nevertheless, I'm simply gonna continue. Another input that you can alter is the layer weight. So you can uh, define different layers that are included in the segmentation and also can weight them. So you can weight them zero, so they're not included in the segmentation, or you can weight them even higher. For example, if you're doing a segmentation within a water area, and you might say, all right, the near infrared is very important or it's a nice discriminator between water and non-water. You simply can increase the weight of this layer and then your results look better. That was a pile of information and that's why we're looking at use cases in cognition. So we're looking at a subset of a city in the US. Maybe you know where we are. And I'm just simply going to execute a few multi-resolution segmentation. This is the default setting. So we're choosing the algorithm multi-resolution segmentation. Leave everything default. So you see the, on the right hand side the parameters, the scale parameter, shape, compactness and so on. Simply going to execute that one. And let's see how the results look like. I also depicted here on the right window in the image object information window the number of objects and also the average area of an object. That's the result. So you see we have large image objects where we have fairly homogeneous uh, reflectances. So in water areas and also in this uh, grass area and where we have a more heterogeneous section of the image like in the city buildings, trees and stuff like that. You end up with smaller image objects using the multi-resolution segmentation. And you also see that spectral similar areas are segmented into one image object. So that's very nice to have. Let's simply increase the scale parameter to 420. So instead of 42, we're increasing it to 420. And the result's gonna be displayed at the bottom. And you instantly gonna see that we have way larger image objects because we increase the scale parameter. We also just have 222 image objects in this case. The top one has a lot more. And you see nicely that we have, for example, for this building using 42 as scale parameter, a lot of image objects within the building using 420. It's just two or three image objects. And a big difference is also here in the river. It's just one image object here, whereas we have multiple using 42. But you also lose small features. So you see these boats in the river, they are visible or they're segmented in using 42 as scale parameter and you, they are merged into the surroundings using 420. 
So it depends on what you want. If you look for boats, I would go for 42. If you look for rivers, uh, you also could go for 420. Now I increase the scale parameter to 1000 and you're gonna see in the bottom pane the number of image objects it is reduced to now 31. And these image objects are pretty large and are covering different spectral features like trees, grassland, also background and buildings. So they are included into one image object. In some cases that might, might make sense but if you're looking for single buildings, this would be too big. And also you wouldn't be able to detect boats. Okay. Let's change the compactness and the influence of shape. So I increase this to the maximum. So you see the difference and the influence of these settings. So we again looking at scale parameter 42 on both panes, top and bottom, but I increased shape and compactness for the bottom one to the maximum value of 0.9. And you see, see that we have very compact image objects. That's a nice example here, this area. If you increase shape and compactness, you see you get compact image objects, but they also covering different spectral signatures. So I don't know if you're interested in, in this, uh, having this might make classification difficult because you have trees and grassland in one image object. But again, it depends on the purpose of your classification. In the last step, I wanted to show you something else. So on top pane, I set the scale parameter to 1000 and kept the rest default. So we're gonna have very large image objects, but you might have noticed that we also have a thematic layer in our project. So you can also say or tell eCognition, the multi-resolution segmentation, that it should include the thematic layer in the segmentation. And that's what I'm going to do on the bottom pane. I set thematic layer usage to yes, and the result looks like this. The thematic layer is now considered in the segmentation result on the bottom pane, but not on top. So you see the number of image objects is way bigger at the bottom. So we have 2700 and all these buildings that are floated as thematically in the pro into the project are cut out as image objects and that's the last thing i want to show thank you very much for watching i hope the multi-resolution segmentation became a bit more clear have a good day and see you next time